Guys, back in Rhode Island today, Brian is joining me again for another episode of Site Visit. You guys have made a ton of progress on this Zegar installation. First, first and foremost, I want to answer a question that's come up a lot. The product is not metal. What is it made out of? It's fiberglass. Fiberglass, which helps the thermal bridging issue. Yep. If this was steel or aluminum or any other kind of metal, you would have that thermal bridging concern. But being that it's fiberglass, it reduces that thermal transfer. We're adding exterior insulation in this home as well as interior insulation. So interior insulation will be your traditional bat. We'll be using the Rockwell Comfort bats on the inside. Uh, everything, you, you, you guys have framed everything 24 inches on center. And then we have this exterior insulation. Let's talk about what we got going on here. Why some of these areas we have small clips. Why we have some that are full length. What's, what's your process here? Well, uh, Julia basically worked with the engineer um, to come up with sort of her minimum viable product, you know, basically uh, at the roofs, especially the spacings were at the edges of the roofs, the space, the spacings were tighter together so that they could, you know, prevent, I guess, what do you call the uplift force of the wind and all sure. that stuff. That's why you see towards the outer corners, their full lengths to mm -hmm. gain that sense of strength, you know, at the corners. Right. And, and so this is all actually the same product. This is these started out as this and was it julia or yeah um they cut that well they, they the crew um they did a great job they basically uh they had a chop saw and they were cutting these little four inch pieces mm -hmm. um and they're basically just to hold the plywood up they're, they're right. going to use this in combination with h clips from simpson yep um so the h clips are basically because that span is is 24 on center because and, and going back to that these are actually you guys have simpson sds screws through this into your stud beyond so you're getting that nice rig, uh, rigid connection but rather than having a continuous number one this is a huge cost savings you have to, you don't have to get as much material but yes. the concern was that you know when you are bridging these these big spans we didn't want the plywood to be all over the place and that's really why those h clips were discussed yes right yep um to kind of eliminate the, the squash factor i mean with a with a typical installation you have you, you can get away with, you know, like a you know, four inch piece of three quarter, mm -hmm. you know, screwed in, you know, directly into the, into the studs. But here we have, you know, the seams of plywood coming together in six inches of insulation, which is really sort of, um, I guess, outstanding compared to what people are normally doing out there. You know, it's a long way for a screw to go. You want to make sure that it hits right you know, and that framing and that's that's a challenge and know? this was something that was changed early on because originally we were going to have you know this is our rockwell comfort board this six inches of insulation we were going to have plywood on top of this and we yep. were going to screw through it through six inches and into our stud yeah exactly and we we knew that could be done and we had talked about this on a previous episode you know there was a couple concerns number one if you drove that screw through if it were to walk in either direction you could and, you know, effectively screw into the edge of that stud and yeah, actually or you not miss know. it. You could miss it completely, or completely miss yep. it. But there's also there was also the concern of in those areas of uplift. I mean, that's a big issue here is the wind uplift. Um, so the, now using these clips, we know we have a rigid connection, yep. and I'm going to take these, and we'll kind of walk through. So we have our concrete foundation, yep. our fentrum tape that wraps up onto our plywood. Our, our my vest that comes down over top of that fentrum tape down to our tremco waterproofing and then we have one layer on the foundation here yep. uh, inside the basement we'll actually have another layer of comfort bat on the interior framing right so we we'll have insulation on both sides of the foundation but as we get up to this wall we'll have the inside and then we'll have one layer you can kind of see how it sits on our foundation shelf kick it up just a little bit and that's actually a detail uh, this right here, Brian, what do you have going on as far as uh, kick out flashing at the bottom there? So we have a roofing contractor um, doing a custom copper flashing here at the at the base. And so it's, you know, it's sort of a wall. heavier extruded, yeah. And then it'll come out across here and then uh, eventually you guys keep asking what we're going to do to finish this. Still in conversation, we'll save that for a later episode but that, that flashing will come out and kind of cap the top of that yep. rock wall. So you get that one layer. And the second layer. And our second layer lines up with, essentially, our lower level. Doing a okay job putting that in. 
Yeah, and the other thing that this does is this, you know, if you have two, that was a big concern of the framer. Um, Chris was worried that, you know, the squash factor, if, if there were just two pieces of plywood coming together in front of the stud and you were screwing it in, you know, it doesn't compress a whole lot. You know, we put a we put a slab on this stuff and it worked out really well. But and, at and the even edges, in the mi right, you, yep. I kind of cut you off there. But yep. like you said, at the in the center, you wouldn't get a lot of squash. Yep. But at the edge of uh, a piece of uh, comfort board and the edge of plywood, yep. that's where you would potentially get that squash. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be impossible. They'd have to put string lines, you know, like an X and create sort of like, you know, like, like try to get that coplanar surface. But here, we're, we're, this prevents all of that because yep. you're, you're going against that hard fiberglass. Exactly, it saves the labor. So there's a couple things I want to call attention to. One being over here, Brian, you guys have these solid ones in the corner. This is going to get filled. Yep. You're gonna have your plywood meet. And then you have the same thing on the interior. Guys, this is what I was talking about in previous episodes is that basically this house is detailed where the plywood's gonna come right against this window, this window extension jam here. Uh, and that's you know essentially gonna get taped, but our siding's going to run right back into our window. And it's these moments similar to inside how that wall will tie right into our window jam and you get this continuous um, basically surface of, of cedar shingle. And that's, those are some of those details that now we're starting to see come together. Yeah, they're really thoughtful. She, you know, this is a good nod to the architect and just sort of her. And, and, know, and Chris, our framer, making sure that this window is yeah, in the right spot. Right, the execution is really good. Yeah, you get that plywood that's tied right to it, and then we'll have our rain screen, which is a... Um, it is from uh, Benjamin Obdike. It's Obdike. called Slicker, is it HP? Sl Slicker HP. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's those details that, you know, this is where we start seeing a lot of those modern details come in. We can see how the clip system work, and same thing up top of the roof. You can actually see how that's detailed right now. Right now, the house doesn't have an overhang, uh, but eventually when all our trim is on and our Dura gutter is installed, you'll mm -hmm. actually have a small overhang here. And then of course we have the epic big overhang on the back. Why don't we walk yep. around there and, sure. and take a look at that. So as, we, as, as we're walking, Brian, on the roof, you're actually using continuous pieces of Z-Gurt. And that is because of the roof load, right? Part of it was to do with the, um, the uplift uh, potential in storms like uh, yep. you know we're we're in a coastal region and as, especially as we get towards the outside edges of the roof there's you know that you're talking about you know how high are the winds during a hurricane you right. know that you know on average when they come into this area so you um, wanted to have a lot of screw down for that second right. layer of plywood yeah and i can only speculate that the rest of that that's filled in is for um i don't know snow load maybe but um sure. that's that's probably something um ben at H and O was considering right, I mean, and you get this big over. area that's left out in the middle. What what is that? So we've been um, tirelessly working over our our um, our uh, skylight, you know, detail, detail, design, whatever. And um, there's been a lot of discussion about what whether Tesla needs it, you know, to have a curb or not have a curb. And we finally talked to a you know a Tesla quality assurance guy that, mm -hmm. that he happened to be the same guy who's going to come look at this house. And he was telling us that we're pretty good to go for, you know, just what we've, you know, what we've bought for a surface mount skylight. We don't have to build any superficial, you know, curbs under it. Right. Um, so they that, should be able to flash that without an issue. And these skylights, the way uh, Julia detailed it, they're off the shelf skylights from Velux. From Velux, yeah. Um, but like you said, we were going through conversations with Tesla roof. This is going to be a complete Tesla roof, front, back, garage, everywhere yeah. is all Tesla. Uh, and you know we've been trying to work through communication. Finally, got connected with the quality assurance guy that yep. was able to give us the answers that we needed. So, I'm going to assume that we're going to get those things installed this week. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure they're going to work on them tomorrow. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so as you see, we got 24 inch spacing in the field, but on the edge, you actually reduce down. Brian, walk me through how they cut every single one of those pieces of rock wool. For the for the for the tighter twelve oh, inch. Yeah, this can... stuff is all I see stacks and stacks of it over here. And I'm gonna grab a piece because I can tell you right now, I've cut this stuff with a knife yep. and that is a pretty clean cut for yeah. a knife. Um it, it was pretty it was pretty amazing. They actually they set one of the guys up uh, in a full hazmat suit with mask and goggles and uh they, they cut all this stuff on a table saw. 
so probably uh, probably ruined the blade or two. Yeah. Uh, but but the guy was protected and it was made yeah. quick work of it. Um, you actually don't see as much dust of it around here, but now they're all cut down and you can see on that, that edge there that they're much tighter spacing. Yeah. Uh, and that, again, going back to Hazen O'Neill, Ben over there had spec a tighter spacing on the edges of the roof. So we wanted to make quick work of that. Um, but realistically, this stuff went, it, overall, this stuff actually went out pretty quick on the sidewall as it well did. as the roof. And he said that, you know, as much as you think it might squish, especially this way, I mean, I've found that is like, you, you think just because it's rock wool, it doesn't have a lot of flex to it. Like it, right. it, it's actually pretty stiff. You, yeah, you, you can see you just slightly longer than you need. Yeah, like on the edge, you can friction. see that little squish, but even in the field, I mean, this stuff is a yeah. lot, a lot more rigid, rigid than I think people think, think especially when we start yep. talking about it. You can even see, you know, when you hold it up from yeah. an end. So looking at the rest of this house, you get this side all clipped. You, you, you start to see the overhang and you can actually start to see you get your one layer or your final layer of sheathing on that roof. Yeah. So we're using a zip product. Yeah. Why is that? So we were originally going to use half inch plywood. Um, we just thought for the roof, um, just because there's going to be sort of an unknown amount of time between now and when the, the roof gets actually installed. For the record, guys, the unknown amount of time is an <laughs> ongoing joke with Tesla right now. So if anyone has a contact to Elon, it'd be great. Uh, we could get figure out when this roof's going to show up. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, we we want to be ready for them too, but we just we just know that's it's it's a little bit of a, a sliding scale as far as when they when they can come. So we're putting the zip the zip up, and we're going to tape the seams just to to prevent that you know all of that rock will from you know getting saturated with water in you know the next rain right you know we've had a lot of rain um you know and it goes with the season but um i think that's just sort of our insurance policy in the in the short term yeah and it's guys it's important to note that uh i want i do want to call attention to the fact that rockwell did not necessarily approve the the system here they they would typically like to see an air gap between that second layer of sheathing and the top of that rockwell comfort board now, while it's not an approved by rock wool method, we did do our due diligence. We have very low risk of any moisture making its way into that cavity. So we do feel confident that what we're doing here is going to work. We've worked with Julia. We've worked with a team of professionals on this. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys have asked about that, that drainage or that air gap, as well as the drainage running those Z-Gert in the vertical fashion to let moisture out if it were to ever get in there but ultimately that's going to be sealed up and no moisture should ever really be in that cavity. So that's why, like Brian said, we've installed a zip because we don't know when that, this Tesla roof is gonna show up. So we want something that can withstand the elements for you know, a, hopefully just a few months yeah. and not much longer than that. Guys, stay tuned until next week when we're back on site and hopefully we see those skylights not only on the roof, yep. but in from the inside. Thanks.